అభిమానం గారు ఒకటి డాక్టర్ ఎస్ఎస్ నాయుడు అసిస్టెంట్ ప్రొఫెసర్ ఇన్ మ్యాథమెటిక్స్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూట్ ఆఫ్ ఏరోనాటికల్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ దిండిగల్ హైదరాబాద్ టుడే ఐఎమ్ గోయింగ్ టు డిస్కస్ అబౌట్ ఆబ్జెక్టివ్ బేస్డ్ ఎడ్యుకేషన్ ఓవి డిస్కషన్ సి ఫస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ వీ హ్యావ్ టు నో వాట్ ఈస్ మెంట్ బై ఆబ్జెక్టివ్ బేస్ ఎడ్యుకేషన్ సి వాట్ అవర్ వేర్ అవర్ వీ ఆర్ డీలింగ్ ఫస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ వీ హ్యావ్ టు నో ఇట్స్ ఆబ్జెక్టివ్ ఫస్ట్ ఇట్ వై ఇట్ ఈస్ బీయింగ్ డిస్కస్డ్ అండ్ వాట్ ఆర్ ద మెయిన్ అండ్ కీ రోల్స్ అబౌట్ దట్ టాపిక్ అండ్ ఆల్ దీస్ థింగ్స్ షుడ్ బీ ఎలాబరేట్లీ డిస్కస్ దట్స్ వై దిస్ టాపిక్ హ్యాస్ బీన్ గోయింగ్ ఆన్ నౌ సి ఇన్ అవర్ ప్రాబిలిటీ శాంప్లింగ్ సో మెనీ థింగ్స్ వీ కెన్ డిస్కస్ ప్రాబిలిటీ శాంప్లింగ్ is a type of sampling where every member of the population has a known and equal chance of being selected for the sample what wherever you are, you take data in that data suppose uh, uh, electioneering is there in electioneering uh, all these cephalogists uh, uh, they go each and every house they won't go they will take uh, some sample from a given data see uh, are yeah, going and taking data from uh, each and every person from each and every house is not at all possible so randomly they will collect uh, some sample that sample will be analyzed systematically scientifically this means that the sample is chosen randomly from the population using a random number generator or other methods to ensure that each member of the population has an equal chance of being included in the sample like that they will take care so that uh, the exact uh, justification will come probability sampling is considered the most reliable and unbiased method because it ensures that the sample is representative of the population and reduces the potential for bias what is bias ambiguity uh, a, uh, there is a doubt uh, either this or that that uh, doubt means that bias should not arise it should be uh, in a clarity way or pro- proper way that's why to avoid um, bias proper sampling is n- needed so in statistics sampling is the process of selecting a subset of data from a larger data set there are two main types of sampling probability sampling and non probability sampling in probability sampling some methods are there like that in non probability sampling some other methods are there the main difference between the two types of sampling is how the sample is selected from the population it is very very important here now let us see probability sampling probability sampling is a type of sampling where every member of the population has a known and equal chance of being selected for the sample this means that the sample is chosen randomly from the population using a random number generator or other methods to ensure that each member of the population has an equal chance of being included in the sample probability sampling is considered the most reliable and unbiased method because it ensures that the sample is representative of the population and reduces the potential for bias always now let us see non probability sampling in non probability sampling we can discuss a type in which the sample members are not randomly selected from the population the, this is the main difference from probability sampling and non probability sampling in a probability sampling randomly a type of a sample will be taken from the given data here in non probability sampling 
it is a type in which the sample members are not at all randomly selected from the population. In non-probability sampling, the sample may be selected based on convenience, availability or other factors rather than random selection. Non-probability sampling is generally considered less reliable and less unbiased than probability sampling because it is not guaranteed to be representative of the population. But uh, in both uh, probability sampling and non-probability sampling, the maximum occurrence will come. But uh, the way that we are doing is different. The main difference between probability and non-probability sampling is how the sample is selected from the population. Probability sampling is based on random selection, while non-probability sampling is based on non-random criteria. Probability sampling is considered more reliable and unbiased, while non-probability sampling is deemed less reliable and less fair. Here, what we are, uh, uh, what we can observe is in a probability sampling, the main thing what we can we can uh, uh, expect uh, more reliability and uh, more, uh, the very less unbiased means uh, uh, there is a less scope for unbias. Here, whereas in a non-probability sampling, it is uh, less reliable and uh, less fair. That is the main difference between uh, uh, probability sampling and non-probability sampling. Now let us see types of probability sampling. Several different sampling methods can be used for probability sampling. Some common sampling methods for probability sampling include simple random sampling. In this simple random sampling, Actually, this is the base, uh, most basic method of probability sampling, where every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected for the sample. This is typically done using a random number generator, lottery or other methods to select a subset of the population randomly. This is the main uh, feature of this uh, sample random sampling. Now let us see other method systematic random sampling. This is a probability sampling method where the sample is selected using a systematic random approach. That is the key point here. This method involves selecting a random starting point in the population and then selecting every some kth member of the population. So for example, checking every sixth piece produced by the machine to be included in the sample. So some criteria we are, we are taking. Uh, what, the, what is that condition? Checking every sixth piece produced by the machine to be included in the sample. For instance, if the population contains 1000 members and the sample size is 100, suppose the researcher could select a random number between 1 and 10 and then select every 10th member of the population starting from that point. See, what is the condition here? Here, how many members are there? 1000 members are there. What is the sample size? 100. 
Here, thousand members are there. The sample size is a hundred. The researcher could select a random number between one and ten, and then select every tenth member of the population, starting from that point. This method ensures that every member of the population has an equal chance. That we are key point here. Every member has an equal chance of being selected for the sample, and can be more efficient. It can be more efficient than sample random sampling. So this is the main feature of systematic. random sampling now let us see very important sampling it is a stratified sampling this stratified sampling method involves dividing the population into different subgroups it divide in this it will be divided into different subgroups or strata based on certain certain characteristics and then randomly selecting a sample from each stratum this ensures that the sample is representative of the various subgroups in the population for example if 10 people are drawn to represent a country five of them are male and five of them are female to avoid gender bias now what we are doing here in stratified sampling by seeing this we are avoiding gender bias we are avoiding ambiguity either this or that or the doubt is uh, should not uh, it should not occur it should be cl clear so we are taking the concept mainly it should be clear and it, should, it is uh, it is non ambiguous means gender bias should not occur so next one more method is there cluster sampling this method involves dividing the population into different clusters and then randomly selecting a sample of clusters all members of the selected clusters are then included in the sample so we are dividing into clusters and we are taking them into consideration and all these members of the cl selected clusters are then included in the sample this method is often used when it is impractical to sample the entire population and can be more efficient than simple random sampling sampling is often clustered by geography or by time periods for example survey all customers visiting particular stores on particular days it comes under definitely it comes under cluster sampling why uh, uh, while the customers coming to a particular store means uh, can we divide them into clusters or not definitely we can uh, divide them into clusters because some people buy some some some, some, article, some article some people buy by some article some people buy some article so uh, uh, as many as clusters we can as many clusters we can provide there so uh, this is the best example for cluster sampling now let us see some common sampling methods for non probability till now we have discussed about uh, so many important uh, sampling methods in a uh, uh, probability uh, now non probability sampling methods let us see this sampling include convenience sampling here we are taking some convenience 
at the same at the same time we are taking some some lenience that's why there is a scope for uh, bias and th that's why there is a scope for uh, less fair wherever we are uh, how, how strong our parameter is there that much strong our survey will be there how le uh, how weak your sampling is there that much uh, 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 ambiguity will come in our sampling here in this uh, convenience sampling this method involves selecting a sample method based on convenience or availability here only we are taking linears convenience or availability means if there is no uh, uh, proper availability you have to go and search and uh, again you have to take time and you have to go for you have to pick out uh, the good thing uh, the reliable thing but uh, here what you what is going on whatever available is there just that only you are taking and you are going on so definitely there will be a possibility for a less fair for example a researcher may choose a sample of participants from a nearby community or a convenient location rather than selecting a random sample from the population it is usually done when you want to get as many responses as possible quickly convenience samples are typically biased that is what we are discussing convenience samples are typically biased means ambiguity will come we cannot judge either this is correct or that is correct that is bias toward those who are agree with your research question for example surveying friends and family members definitely less fair will occur one more method in non probability is judgment sampling this is judgment sampling it is a method of non probability sampling where the sample is selected based on the judgment it is based on the judgment or expertise of the researcher so in judgment sampling the researcher uses their knowledge and experience to select a sample that is believed to represent the population this method is often used when it is difficult or impossible difficult or impossible means if it is difficult or impossible uh, we cannot take a, a wrong thing as correct thing we have to uh, uh, wait we have to take a proper thing and then only we have to keep it into existence but what we are doing here so it is difficult it is impossible that's why whatever readily available there or it is already judged we are taking that's why prob uh, the, there is a chance for less fair when it is difficult or impossible to sample the population randomly or when the researcher has expertise in a particular field that allows them to select a representative sample however judgment sampling is generally considered less reliable as we discussed earlier and less by unbiased than probability sampling why all these things are coming we discussed now uh, we are taking that uh, availability we are taking that difficulty condition we are taking what is a, a judgment uh, already had been done these are not a, a proper criteria to for proper survey that's why these things are coming
less reliable and less unbiased because it is not guaranteed to be representative of the population for example an author an auditor selects a sample based on the concerns in the earlier audit see suppose uh, some investigation is going on on a financial company uh, what will be the newly appointed auditor will do what previous auditors did what is what was their uh, previous uh, auditors uh, uh, report everything this new auditor will analyze after that what are the main mistakes had been done in previous one he will catch or catch them and uh, after that he will, one by one he will analyze uh, with a scientific approach then he will find out where uh, where is the main fault for the bankruptcy of this company that's why a systematic survey should be done irrespective of availability conditions existing there and uh, judgments already had been done these are not the uh, uh, conditions to make a uh, judgment to make a survey survey means it should be proper it should be reliable it should be unbiased that's why uh, we have to take a proper decision now one more uh, sampling which comes under non probability quota sampling what is uh, quota sampling this method involves setting quotas quotas means some amounts for different subgroups for different subgroups in the population and selecting a sample to meet those quotas typically the researcher identifies the target group and then randomly selects a percentage of the group these are the key points for example a university wants to survey students attitudes toward their courses which type of courses they are liking they are fond of which type of new syllabus new which type of new courses for which course most uh, uh, more demand is there which courses are not are being neglected all these things uh, are being uh, surveyed by suppose a university then they know that there are around suppose 1000 students enrolled each year so they randomly select 200 students each year for 1000 to 2000 survey it is impossible from those uh, 1000 students randomly for every five five persons one person reliable person like that they will choose and uh, exactly and proper uh, survey will come survey result will come it can be at least something far better than that uh, 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 previous ones now let us see one more sampling it is also comes under non probability snowball sampling this method involves starting with a small group of participants and then asking them to refer other participants who fit the criteria for the study this process is repeated this process is repeated until the re the desired sample size is reached this method is often used when it is difficult to access the target population so this is also one of the important model so overall the choice of sampling method depends on 
the studies specific goals and the population's nature probability sampling methods are generally considered more reliable and unbiased more reliable and unbiased Unbia unbiased means what bias means what ambiguity unbiased means crystal clear so reliable and crystal clear uh, surveys have to be generated while non probability sampling methods are quicker and easier to conduct but what is the drawback of uh, uh, non probability sampling methods they are less reliable and less unbiased these two things we have to keep it in mind so as we discussed earlier in snowball sampling in snowball sampling is a non probability sampling method where new units are recruited by other units here the key point is where new units are recruited by other units to form part of the sample snowball sampling can be a useful way to conduct research about people with a specific traits who might otherwise be difficult to identify people with a rare disease we can discuss this with the snowball sampling also known as chain sampling or network sampling this snowball sa sampling also known as chain sampling or network sa sampling snowball sampling begins with one or more study participants it then continues on the basis of reference from those participants this process continues until you reach the desired sample that is the advantage of here or a situation point whatever the desired point or situation point is there up to that it can be continued now let us see systematic random sampling this systematic sampling occurs when researchers refers reference a list and choose a certain subgroup as study participants for example you can compile a list of 250 individuals in a population and use every 50 person as a study participant we are taking a constant like this systematic sampling aims to eliminate bias means ambiguity yeah. uh, what is ambiguity either we have to do this thing or that thing the doubt should not arise it should be clear so uh, that confusion is there it comes under ambiguity it comes under bias so to eliminate that uh, uh, confusion that bias and can be easier to achieve than random sampling however systematic sampling differs from simple random sampling because the systematic method does not offer the same probability of being chosen for every member of a population so that is the main advantage of systematic random sampling now in this cluster sampling what what can we learn this cluster sampling involves dividing a certain population into groups or clusters often clusters 
correlate to different geographic areas. So these cl clusters correlate to different geographic areas. Researchers choose clusters to use in their study randomly and every member of each cluster takes part in the study. For example, you could examine the dining habits of residents in a certain state. You can divide these residents into clusters based on the country they live and then use a random sampling method to select 8 countries for the study. Cluster sampling differs from strata sample because some clusters are unprecedented in the final sample whereas researchers use members from every stratum in stratified sampling. These are the key differences between cluster sampling, stratified sampling like that. One and very very important sampling is multi-stage sampling. Multi-stage sampling occurs when you use different sampling methods at different stages of the same study. Here multi-stage sampling occurs when you use different sampling methods at different stages of the same study. Study is same. Different sampling methods are there. This That's why multi, multi means many. This method is helpful for a large population sizes. So this is a helpful for large population sizes. For instance, consider determining how much support a new government initiative has across the country. It is not practical to list every person in the country. So you may start by creating clusters in stage 1 for each state or geographic region. like southwest, southeast, northeast and northwest. In the next stage, you may further divide these clusters into strata and choose random samples from the strata. One more important is voluntary response sampling. In voluntary response sampling, it refers to soliciting responses from volunteers. Unlike other studies, participants select themselves rather than being selected by those carrying out the research. For instance, a teaching assistant may send an evaluation survey via email asking for feedback on their performance. Voluntary response sampling is typically unrepresentative and not random. It is typically unrepresentative and not random. As only respondents with strong opinions are likely to participate in this. Otherwise, they won't care about this. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.